Thanks for letting me stay on with your crew, Captain. I plan to be a very generous queen to all my friends. You could be generous right now. Move into my quarters. They're cozy. A man who describes his quarters as cozy really means he leaves dirty clothes on the floor. Every captain needs a good first mate. Corso doesn't know what it takes to run a starship. But I do. Considering the light years you've been racking up, I suggest a hyperdrive overhaul and a sublight engine tune-up. Which do you want first? The last thing we need is to get stranded in deep space. Keep my hyperdrive... hyper. Consider it done. I'll be indispensable before you know it. Bet you were surprised to see I can hold my own in a fight. I'm pretty good with a blaster. My father taught me to shoot when I was four years old. He robbed me of my big chance. Teaching a girl to shoot can be romantic, if you do it right. And very messy if you don't. Maybe he spared you a visit to the med center. Father wanted me self-sufficient as early as possible. Said I'd need it to survive. He was right. I still remember the day he told me he was going to sleep for a while. Said I was on my own. Nock was in that carbonite for a decade. Weren't you still counting birthdays on one hand? I was 11. Made my first solo hyperspace jump and flew to Dantooine. Father had a hideout there. Talk about your one band of planets. For a few years, Dantooine's population was doubled thanks to me and Father frozen in carbonite. You talk a lot about Nock, but you've never mentioned your mother. She died when I was young. I don't remember her. Looking back, I should have been miserable. But it was just a big adventure. Speaking of which, we're overdue for some more excitement. What do you say we get back to our latest caper? Sometimes I can't believe you actually got back my crown. Do you know how many spacers died looking for it? Don't take this the wrong way, but when we first met, I thought you'd end up like all the others. No wonder you wouldn't let yourself fall for me. You were afraid I'd die. Oh yes, terrified. You're all right, Captain. With a little polish, you just might shine. I've been shining since you met me. You're just not paying attention. Interesting theory. When you can prove it, let me know. I shouldn't be keeping us from our work. I know how busy we are. I think I figured out why we get along so well, Captain. We're both restless people. It's how we survive. Trouble loves us, and we just keep on moving. Eventually, Trouble gets tired of following and gives up. I'm the kind of Trouble that never gets tired. Do yourself a favor, sweetheart. Stop running. I don't have to run from you, Captain. A brisk walk is usually enough. There wasn't nearly enough trouble growing up on Dantooine. After being a crime lord's daughter, sitting around got dull real quick. I had a big library of holo recordings from my father, but I could only watch them so many times. Never figured Nock for the sentimental type. He left you a bunch of hollows dispensing his life's wisdom? If by wisdom you mean teaching me how to become a criminal, then yes. He was a good teacher. Very detail-oriented. By the time I was 14, I'd had enough. I buried Father's carbonite chamber someplace safe and hit the hyperlanes with a new identity. Those were good times. I met Juran and Adila. Got mixed up with Beryl Thorne. Lived a life of crime. Every time I see some idiot scrubbing tables at a cantina, I think of how lucky I am. Normal jobs are for people who aren't smart enough to earn a real living. I'm starting to enjoy these chats, but I'm feeling restless. Let's go find some trouble. I envy you, Captain. You'll always be free to do as you please. That all changes for me, once I'm a queen. Freedom is overrated, sweetheart. I'd rather buy a nice planet somewhere, retire with the woman of my dreams. Dream woman, huh? Good thing you've got a vivid imagination. I've studied records about the Draean dynasty. They started from humble beginnings, distinguished themselves as war heroes. Officially, anyway. In reality, they backstabbed their way to power just like every other ruler. Some were better at it than others. If they'd been able to hold on to power, you'd already be queen. It only takes one bad ruler to topple a dynasty. And my great-grandfather was good at burning bridges. Father had his failings, but he inspired loyalty. Whenever he defeated a rival gangster, he always freed the enemy slaves. He gave them a choice. Join him or take their chances elsewhere. No recriminations for anyone who left. The rest became family. Interesting way to recruit new talent. How many slaves actually signed on? Those people had a lot of anger issues. Most were excited to have a job that let them express it. 
There was this one little Twi'lek girl who joined us. Best thief I ever met. Got into all sorts of trouble together. We were like sisters, but when Father's organization collapsed, we got separated. I never found out what happened to her. Never too late to find her. If she's as good a thief as you say, she might come in handy. That was a long time ago. Sometimes it's better to leave the past alone. You're really bringing out my chatty side today. That usually means I need to get some exercise. Let's find something more exciting to do than stand around. Seems like I've been doing all the talking lately. Makes me suspicious. The biggest drawback of the criminal lifestyle is, you don't meet a lot of decent men. Most are long on charm, short on substance. What's underneath that charming exterior, Captain? Or is that all you've got? Maybe I just didn't want to bore you with personal details. You want to know more about me? Ask away. You're a mercenary who takes jobs for free. How do you plan to stay in business, Captain Goodhart? I'm looking to settle down with a nice girl of independent means. Know anybody like that? <laughs> At least you're honest. I won't lie. I enjoy spending time with you, but I'm not like other girls. The easy lines are wasted on me. If that doesn't scare you off, maybe this will actually go somewhere. I guess we'll see. If I'm going to take over Debrillion, I can't keep looking for allies in the same old places. The scum of the galaxy isn't as useful when you're stealing a throne. I need a better class of accomplices. You can't steal anything big without some corrupt officials on your payroll. There are some interesting rumors out of Debrillion. Turns out the aristocracy is unhappy with the king. Some nobles are secretly rebelling. Taxes are the leading cause of rebellions, but that's the problem. You have such a wonderfully simple view of politics. It terrifies me how often you're right. Dubrillian is turning into another Alderaan. A new queen could prevent that, assuming she had the aristocracy's support. But that means taking this game to a new level. You up for that? I'm not leaving you until you're sitting pretty on that throne. And not even then. I'll have to find you a political appointment. Maybe something in sanitation? I've put out feelers to some key Dubrillian nobles. When one of them bites, be ready to pounce. In the meantime, we have plenty of other business to keep us occupied. I notice we're spending a lot of time together. I'm not complaining, but you know this can't go anywhere, right? Sooner or later, I have to leave your ship. I don't want any hard feelings when I do. Does that make sense? I'd rather regret you for the rest of my life than get scared off by your crazy talk. There's just no reasoning with you. Have it your way. If you want to make something of... whatever it is we have, fine. But don't say I didn't warn you. Never thought I'd say this, but you're my favorite partner in crime. You make beating the odds look easy, Captain. What can I say? I'm inspired by a beautiful woman. Just so we're clear, I had a snappy comeback for that line, but I'm not using it out of respect. I've definitely learned a few dirty tricks from watching you work. Think I might have found a few of my own. We'll find out at our next death-defying showdown. I can't wait. You probably think I'm chasing Debrillian's throne to get rich, don't you? You're a much more complicated woman than that. You think I'm complicated. But in a good way, right? Because I am... complicated. I've seen what bad leadership does to a place. Aldrin, Narshada, even Coruscant. They all suffer because of who's in power. I'm not looking to plunder Debrillion. I want to make it better. Run their society the right way. From everything I've heard about your homeworld, you could use someone decent in charge. Never thought of myself as decent before. Maybe I can sell that. Every successful leader has the same strength. They're perceived as generous by their subjects. Give the people just enough of what they want, and they'll leave you alone. That's something the King of Dubrillion doesn't understand. You can't give people what they want if you can't afford it. Maybe Dubrillion isn't as wealthy as you think. It's wealthy enough to support an aristocracy. Of course, they need to get paid off, too. I can make this work. It's all about negotiation, and I'm good at that. I'm just thinking out loud now. We should get back to business. Been thinking about our decision to keep things casual. Thought I'd make sure you're still alright with it. In case you haven't noticed, I never stopped chasing you. We've been running a long time. That takes real stamina. 
It could be years before I'm on Debrillian's throne. Seems a shame to limit my options in the here and now. You seem to know what I like. Heard of any opportunities I should explore? There's only one, Risha. I'll never settle for second best. I don't think you should either. Good answer. I look forward to continuing this discussion later. Our conversation's just starting. I've got plenty more to say. We won't run out of things to talk about. Good to know. We can't just stand here staring at each other. We have some exciting caper to pull off, don't we? Guess who found a potential accomplice in the Debrillian aristocracy? Feast your eyes on this hollow embossed, genuine flimsiplast invitation. See that fancy arabesque lettering? Hand drawn, in ink, classy. Count Merritt Rinald requests the favor of your presence at a discreet location in the Galactic Senate Tower on Coruscant, at a time of your choosing. Coruscant? Why not do brilliant? Coruscant is neutral ground. Meeting at the Senate Tower? That's a gesture of respect. Count Rinald is one of the most popular nobles on Dubrillion. He's also secretly organizing a rebellion against the king. His invitation is addressed to Risha Drayan, royal heir to the Drayan dynasty. He's taking me very seriously. The Count sounds like the kind of accomplice you need to overthrow the king. I'm contacting him by hollow to arrange our meeting. Wanted you here to help me get a read on him. Opening a channel. Whoa. This is a tremendous moment, your royal heiress. I grew up hearing tales of the Draen dynasty. The great battles your ancestors fought. I never believed I'd meet a member of that proud bloodline in person. You have my deepest sympathies for your family's exile. Risha wants back into Debrillian politics. You can make that happen, right? You must be the starship captain who recovered the crown of Debrillian. My world is in your debt. The king wants that crown, and my head. He won't be happy if he finds out we're talking. The man has lost all reason. He must be removed from power, but in a way that spares our world a bloody civil war. I believe the common people and aristocracy alike would embrace the Draen dynasty heir, especially if she wears the crown of Debrillian. I doubt your current ruler will abdicate just because Risha has a better hat. The king's power base is already unstable. It will crumble under the right pressure. Right now, you are an outsider. The only way to change that is to marry someone from the existing aristocracy. Get married? To who? Well, <clears throat> the only available suitor is... <sighs> Great stars, this is awkward. I am offering myself in marriage to you. Risha already has a man in her life. Forgive me, I should have realized. Have you two joined? Uh, not exactly, no. Please understand, I do not desire to come between you. That said, the final choice should be yours. I understand my proposal is abrupt, but I wished to make my intentions clear and not waste your valuable time. I certainly don't expect an immediate response. All I ask is that you consider this for the good of the brilliant. That'll be easier to do once we've met in person. I'm on my way to Coruscant. See you there, Count. Well, that wasn't awkward at all. Count was a lot nicer than most of the people we deal with. Hard to be sure over the hollow, but I'm comfortable enough to meet him in person. Under the circumstances, I should probably take this meeting alone. Be back soon, Captain. Never talked to a complete stranger for that long before. Count Rinald gives to charities, builds orphanages, creates wildlife preserves, and those are just his hobbies. You ever consider we've been wasting our lives? He pulled every smooth maneuver in the flight manual. That's the thing. He wasn't smooth. He was actually kind of awkward. Stop being so paranoid. I told the Count I needed time to think about his proposal. That'll give me a chance to run a deep background check. 
If this guy is as good as he seems, he just might help me overthrow the king without getting married. Count Reneld is a man of his word. He sends me daily updates about his rebellion's progress. Incredibly sweet, beautifully written updates. I knew taking to Brilliant's throne would be a challenge, but this is getting complicated. I'm not falling for him, but I might have to take this marriage proposal seriously. It's smart politics. If you think I'm letting some wealthy pretty boy come between us, guess again. Don't you get it? My whole future will be spent with wealthy pretty people. When I am queen, my days of racing the hyperlanes are over. Can you honestly see yourself settling down on Debrillion? I'll stop bothering you. I needed to talk, and you're the only person who understands me. Does your new boyfriend understand you like I do? Because if he doesn't, you should think about that. He's not my boyfriend. I'm sure there's trouble somewhere with our name on it. What do you say we go take all its credits? I can't hold off Count Reneld forever. I have to answer his marriage proposal someday. But I want to make an informed decision. I was hoping you could help me out with that. In private. I have a lot to say on the subject. I recommend we lock your door, so our conversation isn't disturbed. You think of everything. That was a very persuasive argument. Sweetheart, this debate's just getting started. You've put some thought into this. I'm, uh, listening. Intently. You know, crowns and thrones aren't that great. I could maybe live without them. Or you could trade in this starship for a palace. What do you think? You're the only treasure I need. Everything else pales in comparison. I'm not done talking to you. Well, that was an enlightening discussion. I think I'm gonna have to disappoint the Count. But first, I need some rest. Let's talk again later. Things under Brilliant have taken a turn. The Kings put a death mark on Count Renald's head. When the citizens heard that, they rebelled. The King imposed martial law to stop the rioting. But that got the aristocracy riled up. The whole planet's going to war. Sounds like the Count's plan to avoid bloodshed by marrying you just went up in flames. We were never going to unseat the King without a fight. I just hope we'd pick the time and place. Needless to say, the Count has his hands full just staying alive. But even with all that's happened, he still wants to marry me. I can't keep putting him off. Any advice how I should play this? You can't marry the Count. You're spending the rest of your life with me. What? I asked you for advice, not... Do you really mean that? Oh, perfect. Time's up. That's him calling on the Hollow. All right. Let's do this. Merit, I'm glad you're safe. From what I hear, the fighting got worse after you escaped. I cannot spare De Brillian from war. But perhaps we can still create a better future together. I realize forging a true relationship takes time, and our marriage won't be consummated for some time. But I am hopeful. My proposal stands, Teresha. Will you marry me? Come on. This is a no-brainer. I'm mean, sure he's rich, handsome, and popular, but I'm me. I'm sorry, Merritt, but I can't argue with logic like that. He's had my heart longer than you. I hope we can still be friends. I'll need you to rebuild our world when the war ends. Of course. I look forward to the day you grant me amnesty, so I may return to Debrillion. Farewell, Risha. May the stars watch over you. That ended better than I expected. Except for that whole part with my world being at war. You said no to the Count's proposal. But I seem to recall you had a second offer on the table. It's under consideration. I promise not to keep you waiting for long. That's enough politics and relationship issues for one day. Let's go steal something expensive. I always feel better after a good caper. Didn't think you could still surprise me, but proposing in front of Count Reneld, that was a whammy. I wasn't sure if you were serious then, but I am now. And my answer is yes. 
Whatever happens, however long it takes, when I'm finally queen of Dubrillion, you'll be my king. It's about blasted time you came around. Do you have any idea how many beautiful women I turned away to have you? Call me vain, but I hope it was thousands. We'll have a royal wedding someday, but let's do something personal right now. I, Risha Drayen, take you as my future king. I promise to be faithful and always apologize when I get snippy with you. Except when you're wrong. What you said, plus this. I'll never skim more than 10% off the royal treasury. Only 10%? You really do love me. What do you say we make this even more official? So, how does it feel to be married? Come to my quarters this time. I've made some modifications for you. How can I resist that offer? You never told me you were an engineering genius. I'm staying in the captain's quarters from now on. It occurs to me that with the Void Wolf dead, we've run out of trouble. Let's go make more. I've been thinking about the future a lot lately, and I had a funny realization. Every scenario I see, you're in it. I guess that's only right, all things considered. But still, never thought I'd get this close to anyone. That kind of talk makes me want to turn out the lights and put up the Do Not Disturb sign. It's funny you should mention that. I've been considering a related topic. When we take over Debrillion, we'll need to start thinking about producing an heir. Maybe more than one heir. That's how dynasties stay healthy, after all. The more, the merrier. I'll put the little scoundrels to work building me a new ship. Great idea. Father taught me all about starships when I was growing up, and I turned out great. Just think, someone with my intelligence and your reflexes, there's nothing that child couldn't accomplish. We owe it to Debrillion. Whatever happens, I promise any child of ours will have the best of everything. <laughs>